Hi, welcome to Conversion Conversations. This is Cameron, and today I'm taking a look at Transformers Generations Legacy Autobot Point Blank and Peacemaker. Point Blank here is a redo of a toy we haven't gotten since G1. We've got all new engineering here. Uh, Point Blank was one of the original Target Masters, and here is his Target Master Peacemaker. Um, and just looking at alt mode without transforming anything or, or anything, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. I mean, this is point blank, but a little sleeker, a little sexier. Um, I love the silver detailing we get around, like, you know, it's it's those uh, collapsible uh, car lights, that kind of thing. We've got a split Autobot symbol up front. We've got a nice tight... Um, kind of if, if you look at like the, the the arrow line here, it's it's one smooth curve. It's definitely a racing vehicle These wheels feel pretty good uh, Right now as is that that rolls nicely a little more silver detail here I like the red the black and then this baby blue uh, That looks really really cool. I dig it I also like that we have that like molded engine detail and I believe if I remember correctly originally this legacy toy was supposed to have a removal engine block, just like the original G1 toy did. Um, the, that had to be cut due to cost cutting. We'll talk about a, a little bit about kind of the design of this thing as we get into transformation. But before I transform anything, this, you know, is a pretty cool car mode. We've got a little Target Master gun here. We'll actually go ahead and open up Peacemaker. Again, similar color scheme. Um, you know, red, black, a little bit of baby blue, a nicely painted little bitty head. Uh, but if you notice, there is no articulation on this guy. He can, I guess he can bow, he can bend at the waist, and that is it. Now, this is kind of my first problem. I don't know why we got this guy. Yes, he's a target master, but we, we just had a big line, uh, right? In War for Cybertron, we have Fire Drive here. And Fire Drive is obviously all sexy and stickered up, but comparing these two, look. Fire Drive is bigger, Fire Drive has at least four points of articulation, and for a little guy, that makes a big difference. Like, all this guy can do is stand. Fire Drive can, like, lift and point his gun. Fire Drive can move forward. Uh, you know, you know, Fire Drive can pose. Fire Drive can, you know, get shot and go sprawling kind of thing. Like, I don't know why they tried to reinvent the wheel here. I would have loved another Battle Master. Give us another one of these guys, but you know, with with Point Blank's design, like with that unique head sculpt and those shoulders and things like that. I, I guess this is part of the cost cutting they had to do. They had a certain budget. They didn't have the budget for a new mold. They don't want to reuse one of their existing Battle Master molds, which I actually think I would have preferred. So they're like, okay, we're gonna make this into three pieces. We have this red plastic piece, we have this red plastic piece, and we have this black piece, and we'll shoot a pin through it. And it'll be super simple and basic, but at least Point Blank will have his target master. And you can see the transformation is, is pretty simple. But I, I think I just would have very much preferred to have... I mean, and I'm not even like... I like the, the target masters, the, the battle masters from Siege. I, I kind of got tired of getting the same ones. I very much appreciated when we got new ones like the Animal, Battle Masters, that sort of thing, Lionizer. Um, oh, come on. Get in there. There we go. Um, it was it was very cool when, when we got the opportunity to get um, Target Masters that were, were new designs. Uh, but even just comparing these two guns, like obviously I put stickers on this guy. Uh, but just the amount of molded detail, uh, the size of the gun, that sort of thing, uh, you know, it's it's a little disappointing that things got shrunk down here. Uh, to that end, things have kind of gotten shrunk down in general. Cro uh, uh, Point Blank is obviously a deluxe. I wasn't sure what to compare it to at first, but I thought, hey, I have another deluxe Target Master uh, in the Titan's Return Hot Rod that has been redone in the uh, mask colors here. Uh, which again, I think looks really, really good. Um, but yeah, look at these two. Like again, obvious size difference. Hot Rod is bigger uh, in about every way. Uh, and spoiler alert, Hot Rod I think has a better transformation here. Um, now, the the actual steps of transformation. There's some interesting little steps here. But what I what annoys me, and it, I don't really show the robot to alt mode transformation in my reviews. Things are fiddly getting to this mold. There's a lot of, at this point, there's a lot of loose bits where I have to like press, there's a tab here that you have to like 
get in there and, and finagle. There's a clash when you bring this leg down here, which I'll show off. You have to make sure you press these legs down. If you don't, he doesn't roll right. Um, right now, this is the best I've gotten him uh, put together. And he looks good, but this was like a couple attempts to get things lined up right. All right, uh, that being said, let's go ahead and get into that transformation. All right, so for transformation, uh, we're going to start out uh, coming in, lifting up the back of this cockpit, and it doesn't lift super high. It, it, like, you can lift it up, but then the, the plastic wants to force it back down, which is a little annoying. And we're going to come in, and we're going to try and separate out a tab from here to here, these two plastic pieces, without popping this piece off its ball joint. We're going to see if we're successful here. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now, we can lift up this leg piece. Again, if you notice, it is, like, compressing. I, if I can move this up. If I, let me, let me put it back in. If I can try and move this out of the way and then lift this leg piece up. There we go. Again, it's smashing into this piece. You can see how tight that, uh, that uh, clash is there. And then I'm slamming into this transparent plastic, which has me a little worried. But rotate the leg out, lets us stretch it out. Uh, and then we can come in and put our toe up. And that's one leg done. Same thing on this side. So you can see the reverse is difficult because this tab here, there's a there's a tab that needs to slide in here and there's a tab up top here that goes into this toe. Uh, and that is a little just fiddly to get in place. Same thing on this side, lift things up, separate out our pieces, try and lift this leg up. And you can see here, there's that conflict. There's that, there we go. Get it up and around, get it out of the way. Not Not too bad. Uh, we're gonna rotate our legs around because this cockpit is actually the front. Uh, now we can come in on the back. We're gonna flip down these two pieces. They just kind of sit. I would have appreciated there isn't any sort of slot. I feel like it, it wouldn't have been that much to just add a slot to securely tab in these two side pieces instead of just letting them hang loose. Uh, but we're gonna come up top. We are gonna split the top here. That lets us take this windshield uh, bring it down and around. There we go. Uh, we're gonna leave this here. Well, we'll do our dramatic re head reveal right now. We do have a dramatic head reveal. I do like that. Uh, we can come in and there are two tabs on the back of this light blue piece that are gonna hit the slots, kind of locking that platform in place. And the last thing is the arms. The arms are pretty simple. Uh, we are going to come in and we are going to rotate them uh, away from this part of the car hood like so. Then we can rotate out the whole arm section like so. Let's us rotate it down on this black joint and then straighten our arm out. Uh, and then if we rotate our shoulder, there is an arm done. Same thing on this side. Come in, bring it down. Does it not wanna, there we go. That's another tight one. Bring it down, bring it out turn it. And here we have point blank in robot mode. And he looks pretty good. Again, it's just the transformation's a little fiddly. Um, but, uh, oh, that platform doesn't always want to stay on, which is frustrating. Uh, but overall, I think he looks pretty good. He looks like G1 point blank. Um, he's got those big, you know, wheel well shoulders. Um, he's, he's, you know, kind of bulky. Um, I, I dig it. It's a, it's a nice classic robot look. What I don't dig so much is the articulation here. If you notice, we do have a head wiggle. This is on a ball joint, but like, okay, look at me try and tilt the head. Was that, like, it, it just goes back in place. There's no, there's, it's so tight and there's not any clearance to actually get any emotion. You can't swivel it, but it might as well have been on a swivel for all the, like, yeah, he can look up a little bit. He can look down a little bit. Um, you know, you can cheat with the platform. Uh, but that that's a little frustrating to me. And it feels like it's been, on these recent Legacy figures, it feels like more and more that neck articulation is getting restricted. And I'm not sure why. The shoulder articulation, you know, 360 there. You can wiggle this piece uh, in and out as well as move this whole hinge. So you got, you know, outward uh, arm movement of up to that much. Now, there is no bicep swivel here uh, due to, I guess, the way this pin joint works, which is unfortunate, and cost cutting. I think they had to remove the planned bicep swivel here. Uh, there is 
uh, elbow swivel, and the elbow can go that far forward. That's all the elbow articulation you get forward in a natural direction uh, because this piece gets into the way of this piece, and that is really disappointing. Now he can get his shoulder up, you know, but he's essentially walking straight arm the entire time. The other disappointing thing is there is no wrist articulation here. Absolutely none. Uh, that is surprising to me. This is like a two-part assembled piece. I don't know why this isn't a mushroom peg that can spin around. That seems like a big miss. Again, maybe cost cutting. There was an interview where they talked about how this toy just ran over its design budget, its manufacturing budget, which is unfortunate. There is waist swivel due to transformation. We can, of course, go out with a full Van Dam. Uh, we can kick out so far. We can kick out so far back. Uh, we do have a nice deep knee bend due to transformation. Uh, and we do have ankle and toe tilt. So, you know, you can get point blank into a decent pose, give him Peacemaker, and he looks pretty good, but the articulation is limited here. This, uh, in terms of articulation, it feels more like a 2010 figure uh, than a 2022 figure. Um, but he looks good. Um, I don't think I have a strong recommendation for this guy. I think there are stronger deluxes in the Legacy line. I very much feel like the Beast Wars of the Legacy line have gotten the premium treatment, and me as a Beast Wars fan, I really, really appreciate that. Um, oh, I guess I should compare him size-wise. Here he is uh, next to another Legacy Deluxe. So you can see he's on the taller side for a Legacy Deluxe. But comparing him to a fellow Titan Master, you can see, you know, he, he falls right into line there in robot mode. Um, I... I think this is not a figure I'd recommend. I think that there's better legacy deluxes out there. I, I'd recommend Alita 1 over this, even though she's smaller. Um, the transformation's just frustrating and alt mode being as fiddly as it is, is is a letdown for me. Um, I, I think I don't, I, 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 it's surprising to me that with the price increases that Hasbro has done, which have been far and away ahead of the, you know, the price increases for oil, which affects the price increase for plastic. Uh, they've been ahead of the rate of inflation we faced. The, the toys have, per pound, gotten more expensive, um, not cheaper, and they haven't stayed the same. So it's interesting to me that they said that this guy needed cost-cutting measures, because those cost-cutting measures feel like point-blank, uh, is uh, on the lower end of the deluxes. Um, you know, if you really, really want point blank, you know, go go get one, but uh, hopefully wait for a sale. You know, at like 15 bucks, it's a, it's a pretty cool $15 toy. It's not a great $25 toy by any means. Um, that is it for today's review. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll catch you all next week. Bye.